look at um, the fraction two-thirds. Two-thirds is one of our special fractions because it is a repeating fraction. When you take the bottom number into the top, or the 3 into the 2, what you've got is well, 3 goes into 26 times, subtracting, and notice what I ended up with. 3 into 20 again, 3 into 20. This will repeat for the rest of eternity. I myself do not want to write continuing sixes for the rest of eternity. So this one, you don't have a choice on how to end the problem. This one, you must use the fraction. So right here, you've got the six, two. The reason I'm choosing to go two places is because eventually I want to build into a percent form. Percent means hundreds and hundreds is my two places. So right there is when I'm going to, oopsie, excuse me, I'm going to do my fraction. That's the top of my fraction. This becomes the bottom of my fraction. So I have 66 and 2 thirds hundredths. I honestly can't give an exact answer any other way. Now I could have rounded, but that's a lesson for a different day to change a fraction, excuse me, to change a decimal to a fraction, I have to take whatever the number is and put it over the place value. And of course, then the next step is always simplify. Because remember, all fractions must be reduced for the rest of your life. So remember, place value, you have one place is tenths, Two places is hundreds, three places is thousands, four places is ten thousandths, and so on. So this number will always be either a ten, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, etc. Let's look at some decimals that I would like to convert to fractions. Remembering your rule that you're going to put whatever the number is over the place value. This being 5 tenths says I've got 5 over 10 and always reduce. Reducing by 5's, five, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 twice. So 5 tenths is the same as 1 half. Okay, this, because it's two places, tells me I have 65 hundredths. Looking at 65 hundredths, yes, the numbers did get bigger, but I know because this ended in a 5 or a 0, I can divide by my 5's. 5 into 65 is 13. 5 into 100 is 20. 13 and 20 don't have a common factor, so I would be done. So 65 hundredths is 13 twentieths. This one's a nice one because 3 hundredths there's nothing that goes into 3 and 100, so I am done. 3 hundredths equals 3 hundredths. Now, looking at 1 and 47 hundredths, the 1 has nothing to do with the decimal. I am going to have the 1 is just hanging around. Then the 47 hundredths becomes part of the fraction. 47 hundredths. The 47 is, nothing else goes into it, and 100, so this would be my answer. If it had been 42 hundredths, then I would have had to have kept reducing. The one still just hangs around. These are both even. So I would take 2 into 41, gives me 21. 2 into 100 gives me 50. So 1 in 42 hundredths is 1 and 21 fiftieths. Another example, 6 and 1 fourth tenths. So this means 6 and 1 fourth divided by 10. One place value gives me my tenths. Okay, changing to an improper fraction, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25 over 4. Remember this starts as 10 over 1, 
When I invert and multiply, this goes to one-tenth. Now, doing some canceling or not. I can take 25 times 1 is 25. 4 times 10 is 40. Or I could have done some canceling. Right here, I can reduce by some 5s. 5 goes into 10 twice. 5 goes into 25 five times. Multiply the tops gives me a 5. Multiply the bottom gives me an 8. Noticing right here, if I reduce by 5s, I also end up with the 5 eighths. So it really does not matter if you multiply across or you do your canceling. Again, you will come up with the same uh, answer. Now let's do the shortcut method. If I have 6 and a fourth tenths, I have 6 and 1 fourth tenths. So I'm going to multiply. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Multiplying the two bottom numbers, 4 times 10 is 40. Noticing right here, I'm at the same position. And simplifying that, I get a 5 eighths. I myself prefer this method because I like fewer steps. But you'll notice that it does not matter. You will end up in exactly the same spot. So there's actually three ways of getting to the same fraction for this one problem. Okay, now let's go backwards. We just discovered this was my answer. So let's like take this 66 and 2 thirds hundredths and let's convert it back to my fraction. So what I have is just by definition, this is 66 and 2 thirds divided by 100. Okay. I'm going to change this to an improper fraction. So 3 times 66 is 198 plus 2 gives me 200 over 3. Remember when you are uh, dividing fractions, you're going to have to invert the fraction on the right. So remembering this starts as 100 over 1. When I flip it over or invert it or multiply by the reciprocal, I'm going to use a multiplication. Nice, I can do some canceling. 100 goes into 100 once. 100 goes into 200 twice, and there's my answer. Multiply the tops, multiply the uh, bottoms. Notice that when I did the 3 into the 2, this was my answer. Now let's look at a slight shortcut here. If I took that 66 and 2 thirds and put it over 100, I'm going to try to shorten up to a fewer steps. 3 times 66 is 198, plus 2 is 200. Multiply these two numbers together. The reason I am is because I would right here over 300. And that reduces to my 2 thirds. So whether I actually use the division or if I use my shortcut, I will still come up with the two-thirds.